Hi students, uh, in this video uh, I will talk about uh, break-even analysis and uh, preparation of uh, income statement and cash flow statement. <coughs> First, uh, to, before I talk about uh, the break-even analysis, uh, you need to be introduced uh, to concepts like cost of production. Uh, and uh, fixed and variable costs so to begin with the cost of production the cost of production uh, is essentially divided into three broad categories direct material cost direct labor cost and manufacturing overhead the direct material cost uh, refers to the cost incurred uh, for purchasing the raw materials that uh, uh, go into making the final product or direct material cost refers to the direct raw materials cost that are used in the final product and can be easily traced uh, into it. Direct labor cost are those labor costs that go or the cost of the labor uh, who actually uh, who are actually involved in the uh, fabrication or making of a, a product. Uh, manufacturing overhead includes uh, all other cost of manufacturing except the direct material cost and labor cost. Uh, manufacturing overhead includes uh, uh, items uh, like indirect material cost, for example, the cost of uh, purchasing. Uh, lubricating oil used in the machine so the lubricating oil or lubricants are indirect materials since uh, they actually are used in lubricating the moving parts of uh, equipment or machine but uh, they do not become a part of uh, the product. Uh, indirect labor cost uh, refers to the expenses incurred for uh, people working in the uh, 
manufacturing uh, plant for example the sweepers uh, who do the sweeping of uh, the who do the cleaning of uh, manufacturing uh, plant or spaces around uh, the uh, machines then another uh, item that is, that is included as a part of manufacturing overhead is the cost of maintaining and repairing of uh, equipment in the uh, manufacturing plant and also the heat and light uh, that is uh, used in the uh, space uh, where actually the machines are uh, installed and people actually produce uh, the products uh, in the manufacturing plant is also included as uh, manufacturing overhead then the property tax uh, taxes uh, for the building uh, in which uh, the production equipment are uh, installed and where people actually work uh, to produce uh, products then depreciation is another part of manufacturing overhead depreciation of the machine depreciation of the building in which uh, the, the actual manufacturing of uh, products happen then insurance on manufacturing facilities overtime paid to people uh, uh, whenever uh, people are required to work uh, uh, more than uh, um, beyond the uh, normal time so all these uh, the cost incurred for all these are included as uh, manufacturing overhead then uh, the cost of production can also be classified uh, uh, as fixed cost and variable cost okay so this this uh, uh, classification of cost is different from the earlier one so whatever uh, cost that you came across earlier those costs can also can be classified either as fixed cost or uh, variable cost so fixed cost uh, refer to those costs that do not vary with uh, output that means costs that do not uh, increase or decrease as the, the amount of uh, production increases or decreases so the example of fixed cost are building rents depreciation of building machinery and equipment insurance premium paid so the these uh, costs do not uh, increase or decrease when the uh, quantity of uh, uh, product when the production is increased or decreased whether the production is increased or decreased uh, the 
the rents uh, for a building will have to be paid and uh, depreciation uh, for buildings, machinery and equipment will have to be paid. Insurance premium will have to be paid no matter uh, uh, whether there is uh, increase or decrease in the production. Uh, the variable costs are those costs which actually vary proportionately with the change in the output or quantity of output or number of units produced. So labor cost and material cost, raw material cost are examples of variable costs. So with the increase in the number of units produced, uh, more number of, uh, to produce uh, increased number of products, uh, more number of employees, num more number of laborers will have to be uh, engaged and to produce uh, increased quantity of product or output uh, more number of uh, more amount of raw materials will be uh, required so the labor cost direct labor and material cost or direct material uh, cost increases or decreases uh, as and when uh, the number of units produced increases or decreases okay so the cost of uh, those uh, items that vary with the increase of increase with the increase and decrease of production is called the variable cost Now, having introduced uh, the different types of costs, production cost, we can uh, go into the break-even analysis. But uh, before we really uh, talk about how to go about uh, uh, calculating break-even point, first we need to understand uh, some uh, concepts again here so we have to under we have to understand concepts like unit contribution margin uh, or contribution margin and so on so the unit contribution margin is the difference between the unit sales price and unit variable cost so the unit contribution margin is equal to unit sales price minus unit variable cost. That means uh, unit contribution margin is equal to price of one unit minus uh, cost of variable cost of one unit of a product uh, being produced uh, contribution margin is uh, the is referring to the total contribution margin uh, which is equal to total sales revenue minus total variable cost so total sales revenue will be equal to unit sales price into number of units sold minus total variable cost which will be equal to uh, number of units uh, sold into 
unit variable cost so the break even point is either the point where the total sales revenue is equal to total expenses or in other words break even point will happen where the total sales uh, when the total sales revenue is equal to total expenses uh, total expenses uh, including variable and fixed cost or break even point can also be defined as the point where the total contribution margin equals the total fixed expenses okay so the break even point is given by this formula uh, fixed expenses divided by unit contribution margin where unit contribution margin is equal to unit sales price minus unit variable cost okay so here is an example so you have the sales volume total sales volume and uh, unit sales price is given 20 neutron then variable expenses or cost total variable expenses or cost is given which is uh, 250,000 ultram uh, also the fixed expenses or fixed cost is given ultram 150,000 and uh, unit uh, variable cost is also given so the question is uh, what is the monthly break-even point in terms of units sold and in terms of the neutron value second question is how many units would have to be sold uh, each month to earn a minimum target net income of 50,000 Newton that means net profit of 50,000 Newton so now to proceed uh, unit first we need to find out the unit uh, uh, contribution margin which is given by unit sales price minus unit variable uh, cost So unit sales price is 20 and unit variable cost is 10 so 20 minus 10 will give you 10 so the uh, unit contribution margin is null term 10 uh, now the monthly break even point we can find out because uh, fixed expenses or cost is already given here and uh, unit contribution margin we already calculated here so break even point is equal to fixed cost divided by unit contribution margin which is equal to new term 150,000 and a new term 150,000 here and divided by the unit contribution margin which is 10 here so you get uh, 15,000 units so that means in order to break even the minimum uh, quantity to be produced is uh, 15,000 units so if you can produce 15,000 units per month then you either you neither make profit nor you are at a loss 
okay so that is why it is called also break even point this is in terms of unit so in terms of the null term value so 15,000 units into uh, null term 20 which is the unit sales price that will give you uh, in terms of the sales volume in in null term so that is 300,000 null term so it also means that uh, to break even uh, you have to make a sale worth uh, null term uh, 300,000 at least so your minimum sales uh, value should be null term 300,000 then you will break even and you will neither be at loss nor be nor you will have profit okay so next question is talking about uh, uh, profit if you want to have a profit net profit of new term 50,000 then what should be the desired uh, quantity that you have to produce so for that uh, what you can do is uh, to the fixed expenses you can add the net profit and then whole thing you can divide by the unit contribution margin that will give you the quantity uh, required to be produced to pro give uh, uh, net profit of null term 50,000 so here you are getting 20,000 units so if you are to uh, achieve a uh, net profit of uh, 50,000 new term then you have to produce an additional amount of 5,000 units in addition to the break even quantity you have to produce 5,000 units more and in total you have to produce 20,000 units then only you will uh, get a profit of 50,000 new term okay so this uh, break-even analysis we can also uh, uh, illustrate with the help of a graph so you can see on the vertical axis you plot the cost uh, or the null term uh, figure on the horizontal axis you pl uh, show the units then uh, you can see that uh, the fixed cost is remaining constant here so on the horizontal axis you show the quantity of uh, output so output increasing from zero in this direction along this horizontal axis and the cost or price of uh, product uh, increasing in this direction along the vertical axis so you if you plot the fixed cost fixed cost remains constant because it is fixed cost the cost will remain constant no matter how much the how much you produce okay so 
you can see that uh, this 150,000 is in between in the midpoint between 100,000 and 200,000 here and the if on top of that uh, as you increase the production then the variable cost increases and when you add uh, the variable cost with the fixed cost then total cost increases in this manner when the production is zero uh, the variable cost is zero so that is why total cost total expenses or cost is 150,000 as the number of uh, units produced increases the variable cost increases and thus the total expenses or cost which is equal to fixed cost plus variable cost increases like this along this line so when the production is uh, zero when the quantity produced is zero the uh, sales uh, revenue is zero when the quantity produced is 5000 then the total sales revenue is this much from here to here so the sales revenue is less than the total expenditure so at this point uh, if you produce uh, 5000 units then you will be at a loss okay because the total cost is more than the total revenue so as you increase the quantity of uh, production and at this point there will be break even when you produce 15,000 units then there will be neither loss nor profit so that is why it is called break even so you can see at this point uh, the total expen expenses line and total revenue line cross or intersect so as you saw here uh, in order to produce in order to get a profit net profit of 50,000 you need to produce 20,000 units so you can see 20,000 units is here and this uh, is lying here on the revenue curve or revenue line which is uh, above the total expenses or total cost line so then because of that there is a profit so if you express this in terms of the null term value then 20,000 into uh, 20 20,000 units into 20 null term uh, sales price will give you 400,000 here okay so actually if you uh, draw a line along this and then you get the a null term value then this minus this should give 50,000 okay now to move on further uh, let us uh, talk about uh, the income statement So let us see how we can prepare an income statement in order to produce, prepare an income statement. We need uh, to 
have the details of all this like the sales revenue expenses net income before tax net income after tax and so on the sales revenue we can get by uh, multiplying the quantity of uh, output with the unit sales price and the expenses we can get from what is called the cost of goods sold which is equal to direct material cost plus direct labor cost and then the operating expenses we can get by adding together uh, factory and uh, non-manufacturing cost uh, then uh, another expense is depreciation and then if there is any interest uh, if there is any loan then then interest is also an expense so to this uh, sales revenue we have to uh, subtract the expenses and the expenses are all this all these expenses we have to subtract in order to get the net income before tax okay so net income before tax is nothing but sales revenue minus expenses uh, which includes all these uh, components okay then uh, you have net income before tax here and then to this you uh, have to uh, calculate with this you have to calculate the income tax and then you get the income tax here and then you get the net income after tax by subtracting the net income before taxes minus the income tax so that is what is written here three the bullet number three the quantity in the bullet number three minus income taxes this income taxes that is what it means okay so in the actual income statement you can you will see like this okay so you can see the income statement here then the end of year is given here zero one two three four five end of year zero end of year one end of year five and so on so and then you have the revenue here null term so you, in this cells you then um, insert the revenue values for each year then the expenses and uh, labor direct labor cost you insert in this cells direct material cost you insert in this cells and then overhead cost you insert in this cells or in this row and then you insert depreciation in this row okay then the taxable income will be the revenue in each year minus the uh, expenses which are labor to, uh, direct labor direct material overhead and depreciation revenue minus all this will give you taxable income in each of these years so on each of these years income then you apply uh, income tax okay for uh, in order to get the income tax here then you multiply the quantity in the taxable income with the uh, uh, with the tax uh, percentage uh, here it is given 40 percent so if you want to get the income tax for year one what you do is you multiply the 
taxable income that you got here into 0.4 then you will get the income tax here so similarly for all other years you can calculate and then net income you get by subtracting taxable income minus tax okay for each year net income is equal to taxable income minus tax so that will give you tax net income now to proceed further on to the cash flow statement uh, to prepare the cash flow statement you have to use the net income from the income statement okay you got the net income here so that one you have to use for preparing cash flow statement here so to this net income what you do is uh, the depreciation that you deducted here in this row uh, you add that quantity back okay you add the quant uh, depreciation for each year to the net income and then you get the cash flow uh, from operating activities what is called uh, operating activities okay so when you add the depreciation to the net income uh, that you got from the uh, income statement then you get uh, what is called uh, cash flow from operating activities okay so uh, you can see here so cash flow statement is here so the cash flow from operating activities is equal to the net income plus depreciation okay so that is why you have the row for net income and depreciation so in all these uh, cells you insert the net income value from the income statement here the net income values from here you uh, transfer here okay transfer here net income in the net income uh, cells and then you copy the depreciation values that you inserted here uh, in this cells here okay then uh, to this uh, cash flow from the operating activities you have to add the cash flow from investing activities what is called cash flow from investing activities which consists of all this okay so if there is any investment made or any if there is any purchase being done to purchase uh, capital equipment then you have to subtract okay and at the end of the uh, project uh, if uh, at the end of the project when you sell this capital equipment then you have what is called the uh, salvage value so the sale of the assets or the proceeds from the sale of the assets at the end of the project that one you have to add whenever in whichever year it is sold okay then you have to subtract the gains tax okay so when you sell any equipment that you purchased here you get some amount 
and to that amount tax is levied okay you are required to pay tax so that is called gains tax so you have to whatever may be the amount uh, at which you actually sold the uh, equipment that multiplied by the uh, tax amount will give you gains tax so gains tax you have to subtract okay then you have to also subtract the investment in what is called working capital so working capital is the uh, uh, cash required for day-to-day -day operation so whatever amount is invested uh, for the day-to-day -day in uh, operation of uh, the company uh, every year that needs to be uh, reflected but uh, at the end of every year this uh, working capital is supposed to be recovered so this uh, investment in working capital will appear only in the beginning and end okay as you can maybe see here you can see here the working capital of 25,000 new term appears in the year zero in the initial investment and in the rest of the years you don't see and in the final year you see 25,000 new term which is recovered so actually this 25,000 new term that you invested in year zero is uh, assumed to be recovered at the end of year one again in the year one when you invest 25,000 new term in the year two you recover back similarly in the year three you recover the 25,000 new term that you invested here and it goes on like that and then at the end of the project period you recover the uh, working capital 25,000 new okay so you have to uh, that is why uh, investment in, in uh, working capital is uh, subtracted here and also uh, added here that is what it means actually it is not like a in the same year you add you subtract and you add so if the working capital remains same and if uh, it is in uh, recovered every each year then you don't need to reflect uh, again and again as you can see here so in this case the initial investment in the working capital is 25,000 new term then in the rest of the years uh, this is recovered and uh, it does not increase if it increases then we need to uh, reflect since here uh, in this case uh, in this example the working capital is not increasing and it is recovered every year uh, they are not shown in the uh, following years except in the last year where it is recovered okay so from this then you get what is called cash flow after investing activities okay so as you can see here so uh, you can see here uh, investing activities and then you have an investment uh, on this and then the salvage value and the gain tax and the working capital as you can see here here is an investing investment activities uh, then in the investment under the investment you have uh, 
machine purchased at uh, 162,000 and the service value is there at the end here 45,000 and the gain tax is there uh, 650 it is in bracket so that means it is minus so whatever quantities appear in bracket are uh, actually negative cash flow it actually shows negative cash flow so investment under the investment activities uh, you purchase a machine and then when you purchase the machine actually cash flows out so that is why it is uh, shown in bracket which means that cash is flowing out or cash uh, is flowing out whereas in case of uh, the uh, operating activities here uh, these are positive because the cash is flowing in okay so here in the working capital also in the initial uh, year at the end of year zero uh, you actually invested made an initial investment of 25,000 uh, that kept repeating uh, and uh, and recovering and at the end also you have this uh, 25,000 null term is assumed to be recovered at the end which is 25,000 again here okay so uh, then from that we get what is called cash flow after investing activities okay so if you from this these two quantities you have to add okay these two quantities you have to add and then from this amount you have to subtract whatever amount appears in these cells right now the these cells are empty so you don't have to subtract okay and then uh, then uh, cash flow after investing activities you will get here like this uh, for the year zero it is uh, addition of all this you get this so net cash flow in the year zero is negative cash is flowing out 162,000 plus 25,000 is flowing out and the in the year one there, there is cash inflow of 37,114 plus 23,143 will give you this one so in these years there are cash inflow and uh, there is nothing to be subtracted here but in the last year there is uh, these quantities are to be subtracted okay so these two quantities total minus this uh, gachilo uh, this plus this plus this because uh, this uh, 45,000 salvage value is a cash inflow so you have to add so net income plus uh, depreciation plus salvage value you add then gains tax because you are being taxed on this 45,000 uh, so that one you have to subtract so that is why it is uh, in bracket here so this three total minus this plus this uh, working capital that you recover at the end of uh, fifth year will give you this so that is how you calculate net cash flow after investing net cash flow after investing okay
So. So what you can do is you can try this example. Okay. Uh, in this example, you are given uh, the generator uh, is purchased at hundred fifty thousand, uh, and another twelve thousand is used to modify. That will give you. Uh, 162,000 initial investment then you have the generator, generator life of 5 years salvage value of 45,000 uh, this uh, generator will provide uh, annual revenue of 175,000 new term and you will have to pay a direct uh, labor cost of uh, 60,000 and direct material cost of 20,000 and 10,000 overhead okay so so in these cells you can actually um, insert the values that are given here okay and then you can try yourself okay you can then try to calculate the tax for each year and net income for each year and then from after getting the net income you can insert the values in this and then you can also insert the depreciation uh, in this row and then you can insert the uh, amount of investment made uh, for the generator which is 162,000 and then salvage value at the end of fifth year and then you can calculate the gains tax you can insert the working capital of 25,000 you'll term here and 25,000 you'll term that you recover at the end and then for each year you can calculate the net cash flow after investing okay so uh, depreciation every year is given here okay So you can try this uh, yourself and if you have any problem you tell me. Okay I think I will stop here because the video is becoming too long.